Yeah, I would like to ask, uh, what is economical sustainability in the society? How do you define that? Um, in co according with your assumptions, or I'm actually asking myself, what is economic sustainability? Is that growth? Is that is? I don't know. No. Because what they say is that we have three pillars, and I maybe ask myself if we only have two pillars because economy economy is all about you have resources, you have people, you have and it's just what makes things. It's it's like a technological thing. I don't know. I don't have any answer to that. I mean, I also have kind of a hard time with. It's not so much an answer; it's more of a comment. Uh, but concerning the economic sustainability, it's kind of a weird concept because the whole point of economics yeah. is it's to earn money, right? Yeah. Yeah, and for example, if we're talking sustainability and money in one sitting, you could always say, well, as humans and as companies, we're interested in making a lot of money, therefore products aren't often made with sustainability in mind because they would last too long, therefore people wouldn't need to spend money and buy a new one, mm -hmm. and that's wasteful. So I've never quite understood why economic sustainability was even part of the equation because really economics in itself is not a sustainable concept. Not well, or, or it is because econom economy is all about making sure that ends meet. I mean, if you don't, you, 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 you get but back. But what kind of ends? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's money, right? Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's but I mean, when you talk cultural sustainability, it's always, it's in many times in a position with economical sustainability because if we have a collective where we don't care about buying new clothes every year we're breaking down the whole fashion industry right? so how can we have a fashion industry when people are not buying new clothes when they are fixing their own clothes right? do we need a fashion industry that's that's the question but people need to live so they can buy more stuff from other people having other industries well anyway that's a very interesting that's question somebody thinks like that yeah yeah but that's also why i think that culture is always being um, hijacked by the discourse of economy, which is also a problem. Mm -hmm. Because then we are thinking about production, pr producing the good cultural products, and, and how do we do that? We copy what they're doing in Hollywood and do it not quite as good, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, that's, that's an assumption. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this isn't so much about what you're saying, it was more a personal question as to how you started working with sound and, and music in this way as opposed to, as you said, you were a composer and this is, I think, a slightly alternative way of working with music as opposed to simply simply creating yeah. songs, which is what mostly you'd be Did you hear the question? No. No, no. So the question is, I understand, it. why do I as a composer start working in this way, yeah. not just spitting out uh, masterpieces? and waiting for people to love them. Like, that's basically what... The, the environment I was brought up in as a composer is all about composing pieces of music and having people play them on a stage and then having an audience liking it and paying the ticket to go there. But the problem was that there isn't any audience. So, uh, and the way that composers are working is far too detached from the, the daily life of people, I say. So we are not... I mean, cultural processes need to be embedded in a practice of, of ordinary people, ordinary people, in the collective. So if you don't bring out cultural... I mean, I do, I, I do acknowledge there exist cultural products, but if they are stemming from a process that is going on between me and myself in a dark room, cold room, uh, then it doesn't make sense. It has to be stemming from a process with people. And I would actually like to call it not pillars, because they talk about three or four pillars. I would like to call it processes. Do you think that Danish culture is uh, threatened? I, I'm asking myself if, if the reason why many Danes are, have a problem with immigrants mm -hmm. is that they are not feeling assured about their own culture. I'm just asking. I mean, but I also feel as I'm a majority person. I'm white. I'm male. I'm part of a, 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 a country which is, I mean, all about white people, Danish people. We speak the same language, and I feel it's difficult to have to feel that I have a culture. 
I'm just a consumer. So what is my culture? I'm asking myself. I never really... It's difficult to, to find it. This is why I'm looking for culture in very small things, like the prosody, you know, the melody of the voice. I believe that we are preserving culture in the way that we're speaking. You can't take that away from us, basically. And also in our gestures, right? So these small things are, is like the safe haven for our culture, where everything else is just, I mean, we had a folk music in Denmark 100 years ago. We had clothes that were Danish 100 years ago. But then we had industrialization, and then everything was wiped out, and just we're just all wearing jeans and eating world cuisine, and uh, so, yeah. I don't know if they answered your question. Well, more or less. <laughs> so where are you from? I'm from Greece. Okay. And we have actually a very strong culture. Yes. And you're not afraid of losing your culture no, and because actually, of immigrants? I, I had uh, have been in a course uh, for about cultures yeah. and about food. Yeah. And how a, um, a new culture uh, gets into an, another cuisine. And uh, I was thinking that uh, in uh, countries with a strong food culture, it's very difficult to put, for example, sushi, and just use this because sushi is very popular in Denmark, yeah. or to use uh, new uh, ways of uh, cooking because yeah. they have their own uh, culture that comes back from many, many years and it's still the same. Of course, I can I could consider Mediterranean food. In I our think area, they it's, it's the, have the same values. This is about sustainability because you have a culture that can last for a long, long yes. time. You have the same ways of doing things that will survive through generations. Mm -hmm. The question is if, if it's a healthy food culture or not. And our Danish food culture before industrialization was healthy. We ate a lot of coal, we ate a lot of uh, healthy stuff. I mean, And then we started being able to buy pork meat. And then we just changed totally to a new kind of culture, which we consider now Danish. But actually we had a folk uh, cuisine before that that was much more healthy. Um, so it just it wasn't sustainable because people were not aware that what they did was sustainable. And in China, everyone wants to eat uh, eat uh, what do you say uh, beef now because they can afford it because and so on. But their health, uh, food culture was very healthy. So anyway, um, a last question, and we can start playing a little. Maybe you have more questions. Last one. Go ahead. We want to do a question from Ireland. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think that if you want to go to your culture, it's better to to start asking others because sometimes we can't feel our culture. Yeah. But someone from outside we can see it. And yeah. uh, if uh, you can see the culture of food in Denmark sometimes. But when I'm coming from outside the country and I can see what to eat and for example, I can say that uh, Denmark, they, they like to eat potatoes and meat. So if I want to bring something new to the to this society, I will bring a food from my country which is consists of uh, some more meat and potatoes. Mm. So I can feel it, I, but sometimes in, when you are in a situation, you can't see it. Yeah. But also, if I want to say that, that, because I hear a lot of times that Danish people are very cold and they don't want to communicate with others. But I, my experience is was, no, they are very kind. Mm -hmm. Really, they are very kind and they want to communicate with you. It's not that they are not very cold people. and So I think if you want to know more, you can ask the immigrants. Yeah, I'm completely agreeing about that. I've been working for 10 years as a teacher and a career guide at a language center. So I've been meeting tons of, literally tons of, of people from abroad. And it, put, it gives you a new perspective on everything, also on yourself. I'm completely agreeing on that. So the question is, what are, how are we, what are we doing when new influences come to our collectives? Right? How are we, what are we doing to to include them? Do we get rid of what we had, as we do with American culture, and just take it in without any questions, or do we oppose ourselves completely? 
as we do with many other kinds of closures. I'm generalizing very much now, very much. So anyway, are we able to keep some of what we have and still take new in? I'm sure there's space enough. I mean, so this is what we're going to work with now. Okay? So could we all get out there and stand up and uh, go to the next phase?